The camera that is on your phone right now is a better camera than Hollywood was using 20 years ago. The camera is not your problem. The finding the employee to post for you is not your problem. I promise you this. The problem is the macro. You're scared to post because you're worried about what other people think. You're worried what your buddy thinks about you doing it. You're worried about somebody saying you don't look good. You're worried about that your makeup's not right, that your muscles aren't good, that your face isn't right, that you are scared. Fear is the biggest way to not make money. Good afternoon. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, Lots to talk about, very excited about uh, getting into the Q&A and really answering a lot of the questions uh, in this audience, but I will frame up my conversation in the macro and the micro of what I see is the opportunity for most people in this room. And when I say macro, micro, what I'm referring to is You've had the luxury to hear Ryan speak and I didn't get the luxury of catching the talk but watching him build his brand over the last half decade and interacting with him quite a bit in New York, um, if he was talking about building personal brand, that's obviously incredibly important but clearly he had a very different path than the majority of this room because 99.9% of this room is not gonna end up on a hit television show at the height of cable consumption for a a decade to get that level of awareness. The majority of you would have to go down the path that I've gone through over the last 15 years, which is creating your own creative and content and using the free distribution of social media to build that brand. And I'm gonna go into that a little bit because the most interesting part for me, being in social media creative, for the last 17 years is how much it's changed in the last 24 months and what that means for everyone here. To give you the cliff notes and the preview, for 2006 to 2009, there was an incredible land grab of attention with early Facebook and Twitter that I and others took advantage of. That got harder as the world started to figure it out. Over the last 24 months, over the last 36 months, the tiktok of of every social media platform has changed everything. There are literally people in this room who've never produced content for social media that can next week make a single video and start a completely different path of growth in their career, and that's pretty remarkable. That hasn't been the case for the last 10 plus years, and that's something every single person in this room needs to take very seriously, but we'll go to that in a minute. That to me is the micro. The micro is how do you make content, like what kind of content, which platforms should you be producing for, what content works on which platform, that's the micro. The macro that I wanna talk to everybody about in this room is none of you have a chance of succeeding in the biggest opportunity you have, which is building your own brand and leveraging that against your ambitions, if you don't have the macro pieces in place. The macro pieces in place are strictly mindset and perspective, strictly. The reality of how life works Everyone's ambition here, business-wise, is completely dictated by what's going on inside of them emotionally. There's no chance you're gonna work hard enough, produce good enough content, or anything else that's required to achieve what you want unless you're in a good place. It's as simple as that. I've done this for a very, very long time, and the reality is, is it's not sustainable unless you've got solid foundation. It's no different than building a home. The things you all sell, it doesn't matter how well you decorate the living room or how nice the color of the paint is in the master bedroom, right? If you do not have steel and concrete that holds up the building. The steel and concrete for every single human here is their emotional stability and what they actually feel. And so the thing that I've been fascinated by was I didn't realize why all my businesses were working in my 20s and 30s until I went a little further on my journey. I am the byproduct of incredible mothering. 
I am lucky that I had a world-class mother who built accountability and self-esteem in me, which made me completely capable of doing everything that I've wanted to do in my business career. Not everybody is as lucky as I am with the luck of the draw of who their mother or father or circumstances were. I was lucky that I was born in the Soviet Union and came to America and we had nothing and had to grow up grinding it out because I never was able to form entitlement because nothing ever came easy to me. These are just the circumstances of all of our lives one way or another. But before we get into how you're gonna sell more stuff or build your business, you've gotta actually be in a place of asking yourself, are you emotionally capable, the macro? Are you emotionally capable to deal with it? Because the biggest issue, the single biggest issue is the single biggest opportunity all at the same time for the reality of this room. The biggest opportunity on earth for every broker that exists is making content on social media at scale, period. Right now, in 2023, as we sit here in this room, there is no second option compared to the truth that is, if you sit in here and are capable of producing 15 to 25 pieces of content a day, across four to five platforms a day that the business ambitions you have will come true. The problem is, the reason most people don't produce 15 to 25 pieces of content a day is not because you have no time. If you understood that it was the single biggest reason that you would make more money, you would find time. If you understood that you would four, five, 10, 15, 100 X your revenue or your sales or your commissions, the dollars in your bank account, you would find two hours a day to do it instead of having a two hour meeting. You would find it. The reason most people do it or don't do it, excuse me, is because they can't deal with the emotional feedback that comes with putting yourself out there. The single reason that this room, I find it very hard to believe that this room in Q1 of 2023 does not understand that social media output is a driver of business. I don't believe there's a single person that has come to this conference that does not understand that to be true. If that's true, and if you came to this conference, I think about this all the time, why are you even here right now? We're in the middle of the week, in the middle of the afternoon. Why would you even be here? The answer to that always for me is because you're ambitious, because you want something to happen, that you're putting in the work to make your thing be better. If that's true, that means that everybody in here is in play to execute the model that creates the growth. This is what brings me to the biggest thing that I want to talk about in this room, which is insecurity. The biggest reason 98% of this room will listen to everything I'm about to say, will do the Q&A, it has complete historical affirmation to be true, and you will leave this conference and still not do it in the face of the truth of it working is 100% predicated on insecurity. To me, this is the biggest pandemic in the world that many of you will not double your business this year because you are not capable of people leaving negative comments on your social media account. To me, the craziest thing when it comes to business is that people in this room will not go and figure out how to make content not because you don't know who to hire, not because you don't know where to post, not because you don't know what to post. All of the things that are disguised when we get into the Q&A, when you're like, ah, oh, Gary, what platform or who should I hire? What kind of camera should I use? The camera that is on your phone right now is a better camera than Hollywood was using 20 years ago. The camera
camera is not your problem. The finding the employee to post for you is not your problem. The problem is the macro. I promise you this. The problem is the macro. You're scared to post because you're worried about what other people think. You're worried what your buddy thinks about you doing it. You're worried about somebody saying you don't look good. You're worried about that your makeup's not right, that your muscles aren't good, that your face isn't right, that you are scared. Fear is the biggest way to not make money. Fear is the biggest way to not achieve what you want. I find this very ironic, and I'll tell you why. The whole world is scared to post because of insecurity and comments, but I find that funny every time I talk to real estate brokers because brokers do something that most people are scared of, which is sell. Most people are scared to sell. Most people are scared to ask for the listing. Most people are scared to sell. Most people are scared to sell. This group in this incredible arena has already crossed the chasm into an area that most people are scared to do. As a matter of fact, many of you try to encourage or you razz your friends for being scared to sell because you're not scared to sell. What's most interesting to me though is selling is very important. But sales never beats branding. Branding always beats sales. Sales is just bad branding. Most of you, when I look at this crowd, this is a very well-dressed, attractive, put-together crew. The amount of brands that are being worn right now by people in front of me that I can just see in the lights is very high, from handbag to tie to suit to dress. Nobody sold you those products. You went and bought them because they built brand. The biggest way for everyone here to die, and what's double important in this conversation is the following. I've spoken to brokers pretty much my whole career. I've done events of this nature around the world. But I think everybody sitting here, the stakes are double high comparison to what I've done in the past because you're in a market post-pandemic that is one of the few flourishing markets in the entire world. You can literally be living almost everywhere else on earth and it is less exciting than being a broker in the UAE. We need to clap that up for a second. By show of clapping loudest, how many people agree with what I just said? Please go. If that's true, if it is true that by the luck of God, you have found yourself in the prime of your career in a market that has ridiculous upside for looking around probably the majority of the rest of the people's careers here, why would you not execute to maximize the opportunity? And the simple answer is, you fear what people are gonna say. This is like, as you can tell by the way I'm setting this up, this is like incredibly emotional to me. I am sitting here looking at thousands of people when I know 98% of you will not do what I'm about to say. Every single person here needs to make a dramatically bigger commitment to producing videos, pictures, and written words on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, LinkedIn, and YouTube tomorrow. Let me tell you why. I don't know if you've heard, it's free. I wanna say this one more time. I love when people are like, Gary, Facebook shadow banned me. My Instagram, I'm not getting as many views, I'm shadow banned. I'm like, you're not shadow banned, you just suck. 
These platforms are free. People get upset and I'm not getting as many views. This is why the world has become so entitled. The biggest issue in the world is entitlement. People literally paint, think about this, I'm 47. I used to pay for full page ads in newspapers. I used to pay for radio spots. I used to pay for local TV ads. These platforms are free. Free. We have become so accustomed to it, we now blame these platforms and the algorithm because your Instagram post doesn't get as many likes as it did two years ago. And instead of blaming yourself because you're posting the same crap over and over, you blame the free platform. Every time I have these kind of talks or conversations one-on-one -on -one or with a smaller group, the amount of people that are capable of having accountability of what they're doing about it is almost non-existent on a free platform. By the way, as many of you know, the platforms are starting to change a little bit. We're starting to see that they might not be free. We're starting to see that Twitter wants to charge this much a month or Facebook wants to charge that much a month. We are living, my friends, through the greatest era of free exposure of all time. In the history of the world. In the history of the world, individual small businesses or human beings have the ability to get free exposure, attention. You know, the single most important asset on earth, attention. Free. In this group, free attention in the single most flourishing market on earth. You can imagine the energy that I had in my body flying out here from Manhattan for this talk. I'm gonna talk to thousands of people who are in the best market in what they do facing the next decade during the most scaled free attention platform in the history of marketing all at the same time and yet 98% of the people in this room won't actually do anything about it. All based on the fact that they are insecure of not getting enough likes or getting a negative comment from somebody. This is what's called a conundrum. My friends, let me help all of you that struggle with people that leave negative comments. I'm gonna make this very simple. You are upset when you post and someone says you're ugly, you're not smart, this is stupid, you should get off of this. Your friend texts you and say you look silly, you're not good on video, whatever it is. I just want you to think about this for a second. Somebody on the receiving end of your content in their feed decided to take their own time and leave a comment to tell you that you're not good. Think about this. You should not be upset for yourself. You should be upset for them. Could you imagine how miserable of a life it is that you are so hurting inside that you need to go find somebody else's content and leave a comment to hurt them, to drag them down to your pain? This is something you have to wrap your head around. It will change the paradigm of how you view this. We must leave this conference understanding this final truth, that the biggest growth in this industry around the world are from the individuals who are outproducing their competitors in social media content. Whatever your feelings are about these platforms, you don't like your kids are on it, you don't like TikTok, you don't like this, you think it's silly, the market, does not care what your opinion is of these platforms. The market is just acting like the market. And we must, we must take advantage of this. Do we understand? Cool. So then I'm gonna double click into this. Let me talk to you about a couple things that I would like to see a lot more people do. How many people here by show of hands, I'm gonna want you to raise your hand, now remember, please don't lie. 
Because if I see somebody raising their hand that I'm not sure about, I might jump out and we might check you. And we're gonna record it. And if you're lying, I'm gonna put it on my social media and shame you to the whole world. So by show of hands, by show of hands, how many people here make YouTube shorts every day? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Four people in this room make YouTube shorts every day. Let me explain to you why this is a major opportunity. YouTube shorts, unlike Instagram reels, unlike TikTok, YouTube shorts has a very unique thing that I think is gonna matter to this room. YouTube, as some of you may know, not most, because people don't think of it that way, YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world behind Google. Now Bing with ChatGPT may start growing and we'll watch it, but YouTube. People go to YouTube to search because some people like myself learn more from audio and video than they do from written words. Cool? YouTube shorts, if you are smart and you're making a piece of video like Instagram and TikTok, but when you name the video, you think about naming it for people that are searching, not just for a clever naming for the video. Unlike Instagram and TikTok, that YouTube short can live for a very long time. I would argue if I'm selling homes, if I'm selling commercial real estate, if I'm selling, YouTube shorts needs to become a major part of the place you go. How many people here are making TikToks or Instagram every day? Raise your hands. Raise it high. Okay, so in general, we have a major problem in this room. But for the people that just raised their hands, just taking the video that you're doing on Instagram and TikTok and then bringing it over to YouTube Shorts and just naming it smartly from a search perspective will disproportionately grow the opportunity of your awareness and branding. What's more concerning to me is I don't know if this room is shy or like people didn't raise their hands, but again, going back to the opening rant, we need to outproduce a lot more than what the room just did. I, I will forever struggle with this conversation and I genuinely implore everyone to get a heck of a lot more serious about this. What's happening is my biggest fear is that a lot of people here in the next three to five years will regret not taking advantage of this era because the world will move. As a matter of fact, this is a fairly young audience, but how many people here do Google AdWords listings and run ads on Google for their listings? Please raise your hands. Again, pretty small. Jesus, I'm moving here and gonna sell homes. The opportunity is very clear. <laughs> Google AdWords was a very big tactic that in the mid 2000s, early 2000s, that I would speak to in events like this that people were not taking advantage of. It has become much more of a standard practice around the world and a lot of people took advantage of it but it costs a lot more to do the same thing. The thing that I'm really hyper focused on in this room is letting and forcing and motivating people to get serious about social media content while it's so underpriced. On an everyday basis, on an everyday basis, more and more people are coming in and producing and it throws off the supply and demand which makes it harder to go. Four years ago, five years ago when I was yelling and screaming about TikTok, very few people were doing it but everyone who did do it would get hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views because there was less people producing but there was a lot of attention. We continue to sit in rooms like this and say, well, I can't sell my luxury homes on TikTok and I continue to get emails every day from people who are selling their luxury homes on TikTok. The amount of people that decide about certain things like this without ever trying it is fascinating to me. To me, this is a very unique time in the history of selling stuff because of the distribution. When I go back for 
the many in here that don't know my story, I, my dad, I was born in the USSR, I come to the US, my dad was a stock boy in a liquor store, and then he eventually owned his own small liquor store. I was very motivated by being the oldest son and wanting to build my dad's business. When I came into my dad's business full time in 1998, the business was doing $3.7 million in revenue. Five years later, the business was doing almost $70 million in revenue. We took no investment, no credit line, no cash infusion. This hyper growth was based on one thing, which is what I've been talking to you about for the last 25 minutes, which is the following. The number one way to grow anything when it comes to business is being the best at understanding where the underpriced attention of the world is. I'm gonna say it again because I want everybody to understand this. The number one way to grow a major business, top line revenue, sales, is to understand where the underpriced attention is. In 1998 for my dad's store, that was email. When I did email marketing in 1998, 1999, 95% of the people on our newsletter open the email. Today, if you get 30%, you're a genius. In 2000, Google AdWords came out and I bought every wine term on Google AdWords for five and 10 cents a click. In 2006, when YouTube came out, I started making videos about wine when nobody was doing it. My career for the last 25 years has been buying or getting free underpriced attention on every single platform that's come out. No question, the only way outside of business development deals behind the scenes that anyone here can two, three, seven, 12, 15X their business is by executing an underpriced attention. The second this audience really grasps the concept of underpriced attention is the second that they will grow. The problem is, Underpriced attention always sits in the stuff of today. And most people, when they want to build a business, look at yesterday. And as a matter of fact, they look at tomorrow. I've had more people ask me about, Gary, should I list homes on the metaverse than I've had people figuring out how to make perfect content on YouTube shorts. We are obsessed with tomorrow. We are romantic about yesterday and most everyone does not execute in today. My obsession of this keynote and this Q&A is to get the majority of this room very focused on today. Today, the people that are being affected by information to make a decision to consider a purchase is predominantly happening on social media. We continue to underestimate it, we continue to politicize it, we continue to have opinions about it, but the reality is it is the currency of attention. I'll give you another one that's very fascinating in this industry. How many people here by show of hands, this one will surprise me, are producing content every day on LinkedIn? Very nice, solid. For me, LinkedIn, for a lot of you, is a humongously untapped social network. LinkedIn in the last seven to eight years has evolved to look a lot more like Facebook than look like a place where you go and find people to hire. What's super interesting about LinkedIn is the following. The mentality of when somebody is going through their feed on LinkedIn is very different than when they're going through their link on Instagram. The psychology of who that person is, all of us, are a different version of our own selves depending on what stream we're going through. When you're going through Facebook, you're in a friends and family mindset. When you're on TikTok, you're in an entertainment mindset. When you are on LinkedIn, you are in a business mindset. I find that this audience making a commitment to videos, listings, pictures, audio in LinkedIn would be very surprised where they find themselves. Look, I come here, I talk in this setting, I'm looking at the crowd right now and trying to process what are people thinking and the only thing that happens in my mind is what sentence can I say to get people to start making? The reason I start now with the macro is I've learned in the last decade 
It has to do with insecurity. It has to do with judgment on oneself. I get it. And it's very challenging. I don't think it's easy to just, I come in and say, stop being insecure and tomorrow you're like, I'm not insecure. But I think it starts with understanding that's why you're not posting. Number two, I focus on the tactics. Here's a very important part for everyone if they're gonna be successful at this game. A lot of people here do not want to make video. They don't feel comfortable, which is fine. My preference is you do. Video outperforms every other medium. It's the way the world works. However, if you are not comfortable on video, please be self-aware and find your own medium. For many of you, writing, which is more this than this, is very acceptable. A photo and writing on a post is very acceptable. Audio is something very few people are doing. Literally taking your phone, hitting record on the record, and talking what you would do on video, but you don't have to be visual. For a lot of people, it means you don't have to get your lighting right, your makeup right, your outfit right. You could just literally do it as you're thinking it through in the car, the office, or in bed. But recording your thoughts on why this is a great listing and all the things you would say to a human being in an open house and putting it on recording and then just uploading the recording with a still picture is remarkably, remarkably right. Before I go into Q&A, I wanna to talk to you about a framework for the people here that are ready to make the jump into what I'm talking about, which is the concept of PAC, platforms and culture. If there's anything I want you to write down or embed into your brain, it's the concept of this, PAC, platforms and culture. The number one way to be successful in making content on social platforms is through the strategic framework of something called PAC. What does it mean? Let's break it down. Platforms. If you do not know how the platforms are acting, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, then you're not going to be successful. I'll give you an example. Every one of you has your listings listed on a website. If you were to take a screenshot of that listing on your mobile device, go to Instagram and TikTok, and put that image behind a green screen and have record yourself talking with the listing behind you. I'm sure at this point, all of you that consume TikTok and Instagram have seen a green screen. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about when I say green screen. Beautiful. If you are to screen shoot your listing, put it on a green screen, and you talk about why you're fond of this listing, that video will get five to 10 times times more views than if you just do a selfie video inside the listing because of the platform creative strategy of green screens working as a creative format. This is very important. This is where people take social media way too lightly. There is an extraordinary amount of strategy that goes into making content. This is very, very important. This is why I encourage all of you to get very serious about the concept of PAC. If you understand how the platforms work and what's over indexing, it's gonna make you more successful at what you're doing. Green screening your listing is gonna be more successful than just videoing it. Then there's culture. If you understand the brands, the artists, the music, the food, the popular culture of your society, the things that are trending, in culture, in UAE, and in that video, against green screen, you reference culture. You make a point to make it relevant to the audience, you will see a major impact on that video consumption. The tactics of PAC are incredibly important and one of the most significant reasons why certain people win and others don't. Another thing that's very important, you don't have to share anything you don't want to share. This is a very big deal of this conversation. One of the reasons people don't post in a room like this is because they think there's rules on posting. I, for example, post almost more than 
every human being on earth. Yet, I don't share my personal life at all. It's not what I'm interested in sharing. It's not what I use it for. I've met many of you through the years who don't post because you're like, I don't want to post my kids. You don't have to post your kids. I don't want to post my personal life. You don't have to post your personal life. You see certain people that do and you believe that that is the requirement to be successful. It is not. You, the best thing about these platforms is you're in control. You post what you want to post. You do not need to compromise your moral compass, your privacy, or anything else. You can use this as a business platform like I do and have for the last 20 years. Please understand that truth. My friends, and I'm gonna be ready for Q&A in a little bit, so please be ready, because I wanna go way more into the details of this. My friends, I genuinely need you to get value from making the commitment of your biggest asset, which is time, to coming to this conference. Hell or high water, I desperately need to figure out how to get this group to start posting a lot more content. It's really just the punchline of this whole thing. The simplicity of this truth is profound. Getting to a place where by the show of hands that I've seen back there and up here, being so low, is something that we have to work through. As we go into this Q&A, please, please, please ask the most basic questions. Often the reason people don't take this journey is they're embarrassed that they don't know the most simple things. Good news, most of this room does not know the most simple things. You are very much not alone, but the reality is there is nothing else you can do. You can switch firms, you can team up with people, you can make relationships, there is nothing you can do that will grow your business, impact your financial system more than making an obnoxious, all-in, full mental and financial commitment to producing as much content on social networks as humanly possible. The faster you do it, the quicker your business is gonna be impacted. And I'm leaving more time to Q&A so we can go into the details that are actually on the minds of everybody in this room because you need to start now because there's really no reason not to grow. Thank you. So because I'm the lucky one, I get to ask the first question, but then we're gonna open the floor. So please, any question, Gary is awesome. He's very open to help. So, you know, you made the effort to come here, that took the time, so let's take this opportunity. Gary, question number one. We are in a commission-driven industry. It doesn't matter if you are a top seller, a top broker, you get into those moments where sometimes things don't go the way it is, you, can, you don't earn the amount of money you expect, or even if you're starting in the industry, you know, sometimes take a couple of months to get to a certain financial level. Or years. What's your take? Look, my sister has gone through this journey. My sister has transitioned from being a teacher to being a stay-at-home mom to now being a real estate agent over the last four to five years. And so, you know, I'm her older brother. We're very close. I am who I am, so we spend a lot of time together on this. And I've watched her go through the ups and downs in a post-COVID world, it was completely crazy, even during COVID, and then in a post-COVID world, there's a real correction. This is why I wanted to make such a big point of how everyone's so fortunate to be in this market. Good markets confuse people. There's a lot of people in this room who are actually not that great that are doing very solid. It's not because they're great, it's because the overall market's great. What do I think? I think that people need to take on accountability. I've, you know, I've, again, interacted with the real estate broker quite a bit in the last 15 years, and I'm dumbfounded by how everybody would rather blame the government or the market besides, instead of blaming themselves. You know, what happens? When you lose, it's your fault. And that's okay. Being a commission-based human means that you're at higher risk for failure, 
one of the reasons this industry is so interesting to so many people is it's lucrative. When it's good, it's good. Um, but you know, to me, what do I think? I think that's merit. I think that's the human game. Um, as a matter of fact, a lot of people here are gonna lose market share to the people that did raise their hands. The biggest thing that's been fascinating me in analyzing the market is how many experienced agents in here will lose business to far less experienced agents in here because the inexperienced agents are gonna outflank them in marketing. And I don't think that they should blame TikTok for that. I think they should blame themselves. So the opportunity is there, guys. It doesn't matter if you're new, if you know, you can still achieve well, whatever you want to achieve. I, I would argue it's never been better for new agents than it is now because of social media. Before social media, it was harder to build a book, right? How many people have been doing this for 20, 15 years or more? Raise your hands. Raise it high. 15 or more. Please raise high. These people that have raised their hands, they know it was harder to break in 15 years ago. It's just so much easier um, and I think people should take advantage of it. My concern is for the people that have been doing it for 15 years. I don't want them to lose market share because they t are taking for granted that they have word of mouth. Social media is word of mouth at scale. This is a word of mouth business. This is a relationship business. To not use the pipes of social media to scale your word of mouth is crazy. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, guys, who wants to ask the first question? All right, there's lots Mic of hands, so we'll be good. Microphones. We have a couple of people over there. Can you please help? Yeah, thank you. That gentleman with the green tie at the end. <laughs> Don't be scared. <laughs> Hi, Gary. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the value you have shared with us. Welcome in the UAE. My name is Islam Hegazi. I have a small agency called First and Foremost Properties. And I wanted to ask you if you think that the next undervalued attention platform is already known. What, what's your thoughts on that? Like, I think if you agree with me, TikTok is too late to start on now or not? It's not too late because creative is the variable of success, but to your point, it's like real estate development. Four years ago, TikTok was like buying beachfront property. Now you're buying seven streets from the beach. It's still good because it's still a great beach, but it's not as good. Uh, yes, I believe I, I, there is an underpriced platform. I don't know if you heard the keynote that I just gave, but there's something called YouTube Shorts. Yeah, it's have always been there. It's, it's there. As a matter of fact, do you know what my other very favorite underpriced platform right now is? Facebook Reels. So this has been a mind twist for me. I haven't been talking about Facebook being underpriced for a decade. But I don't, any, by show of hands, people posting on Facebook Reels? So a solid amount compared to some of the other things. Facebook Reels is actually on fire because not as many people are posting, but there's still so many people consuming. It's out of fashion, it's not as cool. Good news, the demo that's consuming on Facebook buys expensive homes. Great, thank, thank, thank you. you so much. Who's got the mics? Hi, uh, can you help us there? There's some other folks there in the back. Yeah, Are, is thank there you. anybody on this side? Do we only have one runner? No, we have more. Where's uh, the other runner? Can we help with uh, more mics, please? There's a lot of hands. I'm getting yeah, nervous. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, William, can you ask Chris to arrange a few more mics for us, please? Hello. Hi there, how are you? I'm well. Okay, so my question is... What's your name? Binesh. Binesh. So my question is, um, with everyone already doing so much videos and there's just so many similar videos going out, how would you, I, I wanna say, how would you do it to be more creative and not follow trends 
to stand out. Are you posting at all? That's where I'm struggling with. Why don't you just follow trends? Because I don't want to copy. I think a lot of agents here feel the same way. It's not just the fear. So let, let me understand. Because you don't want to copy, you're just going to let everybody else get the business? Mm. Yeah, true. Okay. I have a better idea. Why don't you copy and get some of the business? But how would you stand out? You stand out because you're wearing a pink dress. Okay. <laughs> you have to understand, you as a human being are already standing out because you're a different human being. You might say one word differently. You might have one different joke. You might, one of the things I do, how many people here follow me? Raise your hands. Thank you. So a lot of you know one of the things that make me, I love you back, brother. You know, as a lot of you know, I talk about a lot of different things. I'm a very successful businessman who makes videos about going to garage sales and buying things for 50 cents and selling it for $2. All of us are different. You could talk about your history. Again, you can control your privacy or not, but good news, you'll love this, it's the truth. You're already different because you're just a different human being. You're also gonna have a listing that somebody else doesn't have. That already makes you different. The house is different. The apartment's different. The estate is different. Don't worry about that part. It's, a, it's one of those silly things that doesn't mean anything. Okay. What most people are actually saying when they don't want to copy is they're sad they haven't started and they feel insecure that they have no followers. That's what you're really saying. No. Not maybe you, but I'm saying in general, right? The good news is, and I started with this in the beginning of the talk, it doesn't matter anymore how many followers you have. That game changed. Now it's about the individual piece of content. You could have zero followers on TikTok and your first video could get a million views. That was unheard of for 10 years. The world's changed. It's now about the individual post, not about your followers, which should be huge for a lot of you because a lot of you didn't want to go on because your competitive broker has 10,000 and you're at zero even though you're 10 times bigger than them and you were worried about the perception that world doesn't exist anymore. Awesome. Thank you. I think she has a question. Yeah. Hi. Hi, my name is Ahmed and I'm from Revo Realty. Uh, first of all, thank you so much. We started two years ago and 95% of our sales come from organic marketing through Instagram and TikTok. Hold on one more time. Can you just say that? I just didn't hear you. 95% of our leads come from TikTok and Instagram. Hold on, I didn't hear you. One more time. 95% of our leads come from TikTok, Instagram, YouTube Shorts, LinkedIn, and all the social media platforms. And hold on. And he's only been at it for two years. Two years. He doesn't even, realty. Yeah, he doesn't even know what he's doing yet. Well, uh, my question to you is, uh, what advice that you got that changed your life? Just one advice. And uh, other than that, thank you so much. Uh, we learned a lot from you and that's why we are marketing. Thank if you. you haven't heard about Rebel Realty, you will now. Thank you. <laughs> I think the best piece of advice I got is, as a young kid, I was so good at talking, I could sell anything to anyone. And when you're young, you don't understand that power. And so, I got very fortunate. When I was about 14 or 15, my father taught me. And I'm really grateful to this day about that. My father said, your word is your bond. It's the most important contract. And it really changed the course of my life because I was too talented in the way I could story tell. And I even understood as a young kid that I could really get anyone to believe anything. And by really going down a path where my, my reputation and my word mattered most, it really allowed a lot of what's happening to me now to happen. So the best advice I got was, your word is your contract. Hi, 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 I'm here. Uh, my name is Iwan, uh, Astra Properties Agency. So nice to meet you. Nice to I meet was you. following you in Instagram maybe for three years and I'm glad to see you here. Thank you, my friend. Uh, one question, how do you manage this 
content production process. How many people you have? And if you are a beginner, how can you delegate this process to someone? And what type, what, which part of this process you can delegate and you cannot? Understood. So today, I have 25 full-time employees that work on my content. However, the first nine years that I made content, I had zero. So when I answer 25 today, and everyone's like, oh, see? <laughs> I remind all of you that the first nine years, I did it all by myself. By doing it by myself for nine years is what enabled me to afford having 25 full-time employees on it. So to answer your question, first, I don't think any of you should delegate any of it at first, because if you don't understand it, you won't know how to hire, and more importantly, you won't know how to judge someone that you hired if you don't understand it. Listen, the reality, my friend, is this. I actually believe this is the single most important thing for any business and person in business today. I would rather know how to make social media content than know how to manage my checkbook. It's that important. Every day that goes by, this is becoming more important. Every day. So I would say, in the short term, before you delegate this to your 25-year-old niece or to some 18-year-old you met at a conference, spend one year and do it yourself. Taste it. Understand it. Because if you don't, you're going to pay someone who's not going to do a good job and you're going to have no clue that it's not a good job and then you're going to say it doesn't work. Social media is like basketball. If you're not good at basketball, you're not going to make any money. If you're good at basketball, you're going to make a billion dollars. And so this is very important. So please don't delegate it. Do it for a year or two yourself. Learn it all and then you can start building a team. And when, you, and when the next question comes where like, where do I find time? Every person in here does a two hour and a half lunch that could be 45 minutes. So if you make your two and a half hour lunch an hour, you now have an hour and a half to make content. That lady over there. Hi. Hello, Gary. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm well. My name is McKenna. I'm also from the States. So welcome Thank to you. UAE. So Thank good you, to McKenna. see you. Um, and I appreciate your advice and your enthusiasm sincerely. Thank you. I just started a YouTube channel. I've been saying I need to start one forever. I finally yep. did. Um, but one thing I have troubles with is planning my content, which you were just talking about. Yep. So do you have a system and how do you time manage your everyday posting? Yeah, so I think one thing McKenna that I said years ago that I was, it was just in a podcast and it became one of the most substantial pieces of content I've ever made and I didn't think it was a big deal at the time, really will help a lot of people here who want to do YouTube. The way you plan content is not in the micro, it's in the macro. The macro point of view I have on this is if you documented your content instead of created your content, it would get very easy. So instead of thinking about what you're gonna make, mm -hmm. just film everything you're doing, mm -hmm. and then you have documentation, and then you can decide, or you could just post the whole darn thing, so it's more vlogging than trying to do a TV episode. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to do what Ryan, right? Like, that's a multi-million dollar production company and distribution model. Mm -hmm. We're just humans. You could even do it with your own phone. I really think it's a documenting versus create. And again, posting, when this is your priority, mm -hmm. it is your priority. Okay. Everyone's like, Gary, I don't, you know, how do I plan my, again, how, how do you plan your eating? When you're hungry, exactly. So it's because it's your priority, exactly. right? Yes. You can easily, like I post at 8.30 in the morning, 11.30 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, excuse me, in the afternoon, and 7.30 at night. I, it, is, it is my priority. Mm -hmm. 
people are like, I have no time to, I said it. For the first 38 years of my life, I said I didn't have time to go to the gym until it became my priority and now I don't miss it ever and I'm busier than I've ever been. Mm -hmm. The reason everyone's struggling is because this right now in this room is not a priority. Mm -hmm. It is not. It is for people that are coming up in the game like that gentleman who gets 95% of his leads because he was two years in, it was the only way he was gonna break out. So you just have to make it a priority. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, the, the back. Hi, hi Gary. My Hello. name is Harjeet. Harjeet. I'm from Revo Reality 2. First of all, I tell you, I depend 100% of my leads actually come from TikTok, Instagram, everywhere. I have a choice, but I can go for marketing leads. I don't go for it because I have few followers on Instagram and TikTok. It's all because of you. You showed that thing because I followed you from my college time <laughs> and I started from the last one year. So whatever I am right now in real estate is all because of you. Thank you so much for that. Brother, it's all because of you. I just told every single person in the room what I've been telling you on my content for years, and I'm telling you 95% of the people here are not gonna do anything about it. So that's not me, that's you. You took action on the advice, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much for that. My question is that right now, I have few followers, few hundred followers on my social media. Yep. What I feel when it's come to challenges, there's a certain level of uh, like quality is there in my videos. People love it. Thank you so much for that. It's all because of them. Uh, now, that is a problem for me because I compare with that videos. I have to make it more perfect, more perfect, and that is a problem. Because of that, I'm not able to post videos or I struggle to come up with that kind of quality because that is an expectation that people also have, in my mind, also I have, that you, whenever I... You just answer the question. In your mind. Just in mind. Okay. In your mind, brother. You're, you're, you know, you're doing the next version of what I'm trying to get. Everyone here hasn't jumped. You've jumped, but you've changed the rules in the jumping. You've created an ideology of what the quality should be. Quality is like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder. You're the beholder. You're sabotaging yourself by creating rules to not make more content. If you like me so much, have you not seen my videos where the lighting sucks, where I look like crap, where I don't give a crap and I'm just putting out the content? Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hello. And I think also um, to, to his point and what you just said to reinforce, people are so obsessed about getting more followers when you can put a very good piece of content with zero followers and get the attention and or, or, the leads you need. Or what he's saying is he's put production value on a pedestal. Correct. Right? And I'm very empathetic to this. Like, the amount of people, they're like, Gary, I can't post four hours you know, four times a day and I ask them and then I realize it takes them three hours to post one video. And I'm like, what does that mean? And they're like, well, it takes me an hour and a half for makeup. And I'm like, I, you, know, it start, you know, you start getting into that and I'm, I'm really empathetic to that. I don't say that lightly, I understand. The problem is you're just digging a deeper and deeper hole of insecurity based on judgment. If someone doesn't love you without makeup, you don't want them to love you. Absolutely. And it becomes unpractical as well, so. Okay, hello. Down here, guys, to your right. Down here, to your right, all the way to the back. All the way okay. to the back. Thank you so gotcha. much for noticing. Come, come to the light so we can see you. Walk, walk a little. Okay. Yeah, please. Feels like the Oscars already. Yes. <laughs> also, before we, runners, before we run out of time, there's some people up here in the front yeah. that really want to do it. This woman in the white has to happen or they're gonna punch me at her table. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Wonderful. Hi, Gary, I'm right here. I see you. Shah from Timmy Properties. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for flying all the way down here just to make this happen. Thank you. Um, I have a very simplistic question, Gary. You just mentioned uh, various social media platforms, including LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. I mean, just to categorize it, I'm sorry. Um, how do you rate these platforms? Like, if I was to start doing what you're asking me to do today, how would I start? Do I go ahead all in on YouTube? Do I give 20% each? Or for me, as a fresher, 
how do I categorize these platforms in order to utilize my viewership? The answer is nobody really knows because you may over-index as a communicator on a different platform than somebody else in this room. For me personally, I would definitely, definitely get serious about TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and LinkedIn. If I had to give an answer for the general population of this room, those th Instagram's too hard, too much supply and demand, too hard. TikTok is getting harder but still has a window. YouTube Shorts, I'm very bullish on and especially for this audience if you title the video smart. And LinkedIn, I think, has real potential and is still very underpriced on distribution for this audience. So for, for you, I would do LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, and TikTok. Wonderful, thank you so much. Got it. Hi, Gary, my name's Stephen, Hunt and Harris Real Estate in Russell Kamar. So Pleasure. Thank you for being here, uh, good to see you. I followed you for a long time, and in the early days, I used to find you a little bit uh, abrasive, <laughs> uh, the language quite uh, harsh, yes. but I could see through to the content, and I, I quite enjoyed that. Thank you. Um, and I see that's changed a lot over the years. Yeah. So can you explain why you changed? Was it as a result of feedback you were getting from your community, or you saw it as a, a different tack that you wanted to take in your content? This is a really funny question. I'll tell you why. It's a very common question, so my team ran some analytics. I'm actually not cursing any less. I think the world changed. In 2009, 10, 11, 12, when I was cursing on stage, that was a little more unusual. So I think the world's changed as much as I've changed, plus, I think you'll appreciate this, none of us are the exact same person we are at 27, then we are at 41, then we are at 47. So I think things evolve. I think also, you know, when I first kind of really started making content, the global economy was in big trouble. 2008, 9, 10, 11. And a lot of what I was trying to get across was trying to shake people into, they controlled their work ethic and things of that nature. I, you know, I, I think I've evolved. I think the audience has evolved. And so, I think it's just a human journey, you know? I'm sure the feedback has, pe you know, I'm sure, it's also contextual. I will absolutely curse less here than I would curse in New York. It's just kind of the ebb and flow of like life. Cheers. Go ahead, my friend. Hi, um, so content creation. Um, I actually started on social media about three months ago. Um, Instagram is at real estate by Amr, A-M-R. Um, and my question to you, Gary, uh, is what do you do to get ideas to generate videos that has the potential to go viral? By not trying to go viral. Amazing. Okay, thank you so much. And I'll give you a little bit more and then we'll go here. My big thing is I want to talk about only two things. Things that I know and things that I think could bring people value. The quick, you know, when a lot of you go in this journey, if you don't make the video just about talking about the house that, or the apartment or the thing you're trying to sell, but you talk about value, the things you would talk about in a deeper conversation, like why this neighborhood is good, why the school system is good, why the location is good, value. Think value, and so that, I think that will help you, brother. Hi, Gary, how Hi. are you? Uh, my name is Rawan from Almira Real Estate. So I actually have two questions. The first one is, um, I want to know, I'm very curious to know, what has been the biggest challenge in your experience, in your career, like, let's say, a learning experience, and how did you overcome it? The biggest challenge, and this is very interesting, especially based on that gentleman's question, is, believe it or not, the biggest challenge for me has been delivering candor. You know, on public stage, in this environment, I'm very good at candor, because I'm not talking to anybody. I'm talking to everybody. But in my, you know, Gary V, great at candor. Gary Vaynerchuk has struggled with candor his whole career because I don't like conflict and I don't like negativity. And so I've always tried to go around it and figure it out. And it's really cost me. Like when I think about the people that don't have a good relationship with me, it's always 100% based on my inability to be candorous based on something they were doing. The way I've attacked it is the same way Everybody changes anything through life experience and education and putting in the work, you know, and so 
And then I rebranded candor. I now call it kind candor. If I have to tell something to somebody that I'm disappointed in them for, I always do it as kind and empathetic and compassionate as possible, and it's made me a better communicator, and it's saved me a lot of headaches, and it's really helped me grow personally and professionally, and so that's how I did it. So my second question is actually me asking for advice okay. from your experience in social media. So long story short, um, I have my Instagram page where I create content uh, based on lifestyle. It's just a lifestyle blog. I don't have a specific niche for it. And I've had it before I even got into real estate. And then I got into real estate. I love it. It's been my career ever since and everything. So now oh. I've been Gosh. having this dilemma whether I should combine both contents in one or it's going to ruin my algorithm and insights or should I keep them separate or what should I do? You should do it in one. It's not gonna ruin your algorithm or insights. It's just not gonna perform as well. Okay. When you're posting lifestyle and people are following you for fashion or food or travel or your taste, that's what they've been following you for and that's what they're interested in. Plus it's more interesting than you trying to sell them a home. Yeah. But it's okay to have content that does well and content that doesn't do as well because when it doesn't do as well, the way you're judging that is it's only gonna get 88 likes instead of 4,000 likes. Likes are not the goal. When you post something about this amazing purse or this amazing restaurant or this amazing place you visited, that's great, that keeps people engaged. But when your fourth post is a listing, it's equally okay for that to only get 10 likes instead of 5,000 because you're not there for likes, you're there for one person to buy it. And so too many, thank you. And so too many people, if you listen, it's all the same thing, it's an ideology. You're worried about your algorithm because you're worried about getting as many likes as the last post got and that means nothing. Meanwhile, you're willing to not sell as much because you don't wanna ruin your 3,000 likes per post, think about that. I'd rather ruin all my likes to grow my business. True. <laughs> thank you, thank you You're so welcome. much. This last lady here, I'm gonna wrap up guys, it's our final question. Oh my God, I finally reached. <laughs> okay, uh, Gary V, first of all, I'm a big fan. Thank uh, you. It's been so many years because I was professionally doing marketing for uh, more than eight years and I was doing for the brands. I was always like, okay, personal brands, but I was always pushing myself behind the, yes. the, the, the phone, behind the uh, computer. So I was always a hidden person behind all of this. Yes. And I have really, I'm paying for it a lot right now just to stand out from the crowd again, to show myself in. By the way, my name is Luba Novikova and N-O-V-L-I-U-B-A. <laughs> that's, my, that's my nickname everywhere. So uh, my question, it's about the personal brand because I have started to put my personal brand. I started to create my real estate character because I was a marketer before. Yes. So uh, about the personal brand, how would you take the personal brand for the marketer? Maybe, um, maybe you have some ideas or top kind of advices which you can advise for a personal brand in the real estate and what, or maybe overall personal brand. I'm looking forward to well, hear. Well, well, let me make sure I understand. What would you like to happen? Uh, of course, I want to be fa worldwide famous. Yes. I want to be really, really big on the market. I think you should post 40 times a day. 40 times a day. That's right. Okay. <laughs> and, and when I say that, here's what I mean. All that any of us can do is talk about what we're interested in, what we know, or observations. Right? Okay. You could talk about what you're interested in, food, travel, sport, television, anything what you're interested in. Then you could talk about what you know. You know about marketing, you know about real estate, you may know about other things. And then you could talk about observations. You're seeing this, you're interested, here's my opinion. This is not expertise, but here's my opinion. If you understand those three things, you actually now have the capability to produce a lot of content. When I say 40 times a day, I wanna make sure everybody hears this. If Luba does that and she makes five videos, she can then post those five videos on eight different platforms. If she does different copy to go with the video, when she posts that video about marketing on LinkedIn, if she writes different words on LinkedIn, 
then she writes on TikTok because she knows on LinkedIn there's professionals, but on TikTok there might be youth. Those become two different posts, but they're the same video. You understand? Three so posts. five videos in a day can be 40 posts. Mm. If, she, if, Miko, if she documents, her, if you just video your whole day, well then you have so much content. Or if you go, let me give you a big secret that will work for a lot of you. Go find very, 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 very small podcasts and shows on YouTube. Very small. The ones that will say yes to you, just like I did in 2007. And ask if they'll have you on as a guest, because they're just looking for guests. If they have you on as a guest, now they're asking you questions for 30 minutes. You don't have to come up with the content. And when the video is done, you can post, produce, and clip the videos and post it on social. Got it? Perfect. This one actually is so good. Thank you. Guys, give it up to Carrie V. Thank you.